Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the future of the water and wastewater industry and the careers you didn't know about. I'm your host, Dave Kosminski, and we're live in the studio with a special friend of mine, a veteran of the water industry, uh, originally from uh, New Britain Water. Okay, we have Miss Donna Bacosi. Hi, Donna. Hi, oh, Dave. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming over to the studio. And so we're just kind of uh, interviewing people on uh, their storied careers in the in the water industry. So tell us a little bit how you started in the water industry. Actually, I started out in the city of New Britain in a grants administration office. And about five years after that, I transferred to the water department. Aha. Uh-huh. Um, so now that the, the, the water obviously is uh, uh, part of the municipality, correct? Correct, yes. Uh-huh. So how, how big is that water utility as far as customer-wise? Oh, well, there's 80,000 people or so at that time, oh many my years gosh. ago. Um, not necessarily customers, but people living there. And uh, yeah, it was much bigger than where I am now. Right, right, right. Now, you, yeah, how many connections did, did, did you guys service over there? You're testing me. I don't quite remember all that. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, I know we're, we're about uh, 20, 2,300 here in, 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 in Portland. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a much, much smaller uh, utility and so forth. But we still do the same thing. We, you know, exactly. You turn on the water and uh, water comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and so forth. So, uh, you know, going from uh, administration to over, over the water, was, was that a, a far stretch as far as in the, in the water utility? No, I don't think it was. Um, I was involved with billing and so forth. Um, uh, that was how I started out in, as a billing clerk and ended up in the billing department of the water okay. um, department. So uh, not a far stretch, no. Okay. So uh, now, uh, how many years did you have in, in, in New Britain? Uh, total 30 and a half, about 25 of that with water. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, so you, you've been... With, around the block and you, this is certainly not your first rodeo now so you you retired from the britain correct i did and, and you had a you know uh, a mutual of acquaintance of ours uh, uh, uh he's a veteran in the water industry that's uh you know he's a, a hallmark in in the connecticut section but mr jack mcmanus you know jack oh without a doubt <laughs> and, and jack has uh uh he's uh he was with he i, I think he had almost 40 years and then uh, before he retired Somewhere in that neighborhood, yes. Yes, yeah. And he's he's now he's around cruising the world, retired. And I, when I ask him, okay, Jack, what are you doing? He says, I'm skiing. I says, it's in July. He says, no, I'm skiing. I'm spending my kids' inheritance. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're gonna get Jack up here too. So anyway, so um, you know when you when you obviously retired, uh, as far as that goes, um, did you just si- decided it was time and? Um, no, they offered us a benefit package, oh, okay. um, an extended one. Um, so I decided I needed to take it. Yes. Um, we had two weeks to decide, okay. uh, which was tough because, um, after 30 and a half years, uh, you're not quite sure what you're going to do at that point. Exactly. Um, but it sounded good to me and yeah. people said, well, what are you going to do with yourself? I said, anything I want. There you go. There you go. Well, as you know, the whole premise of, you know, me uh, starting this podcast, obviously, is that, the, you know, uh, all of us veterans, if you want to say, of the water industry, we're all getting to that age of, of retirement. And uh, we're getting, uh, um, you know, a huge influx of retirees. And uh, sometimes it's termed uh, as the, the gray tsunami uh, <laughs> and so forth. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of knowledge base that's, that's uh, you know, ended up, wa- uh, you know, walking out the door. And uh, yes. we got to start filling that pipeline with some, uh, some younger blood, so to speak, and exactly. so forth. I, I know I did a, uh, an article, uh, an op-ed for the uh, Municipal Water and Sewer Magazine and entitled Refilling the Pipeline, because, you know, I've been involved in that uh, with my water and people class uh, and so forth. But, uh, yeah, it, it is, uh, it, it's becoming a, a, a critical situation. And it's not only in our industry, it's in a, in a lot of industries. So yeah. uh, to go with this. So obviously you retired mm-hmm. and, um, you know, you got bored, I so to I did. I was retired uh, for about a year. And uh-huh. then I went back to work and uh, not in the mun- municipal field and not in the water field, which I missed. Yeah. Um, I worked for a hospital and a manufacturing firm, and, um, but it wasn't my thing. Um, I saw an opportunity with Cromwell, uh-huh. and I 
applied for it and sure. I was hired and the rest is history. I've been there a little over two years and I absolutely love it. Nice, nice. And yes. you're, you're part-time, correct? I am. Okay. Now, you know, I, I assume the, the job responsibilities from New Britain Cromwell are similar. Okay, obviously yes. a larger, uh, a smaller scale in New Britain as far as that goes. So, so t- tell us a bit about your, your your day job, so to speak. What what does that entail for well, our younger listeners that that want to get into this industry? Right. Well, um, right now my focus is on collection of delinquent accounts. Okay. Um, they really didn't have a program put together. Um, that they maintained. Mm-hmm. Um, very short staffed at the moment, yep. and. Um, so I kind of took it upon myself to implement a program, mm-hmm. liens, uh, put in liens in place and sending out letters and, and so forth. And that's been pretty successful. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's a procedure, obviously, that all utilities have to follow, you know, as far as in relation to notifying customers that are, you know, delinquent in their, in, in their water bills. And you have to send them a notification letter. And do you do all of that? Oh, oh yes. Okay. Oh, yes. So t- tell us how that process works, though. Well, I go through their accounts receivable, um, their aging trial balance, if you will, and um, I pick out those with a huge balances and those who have not paid for yeah, yeah. at times several years. Yeah, yeah. And they were my first um, customers to uh, send them a letter yeah. and remind them that a hey, you know you owe this much yeah, I'm and this money. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> and that got a lot of um, answers and, and payments and so forth. So yeah. that was pretty successful. Well, that's good. You know, I think that's uh, you know municipalities as far as uh, in comparison to a lot of the. Uh, the investor owns and so forth. The investor owns obviously have to answer to stockholders and all of that kind of stuff. They're, they're a lot more um, attuned to uh, business procedures and, you know, trying to people uh, keep people current, you know, as far yes. as that goes. Municipalities sometimes are a little bit more lax and say, okay, well, you know, we always have that uh, lean notice thing in our back pocket. Uh, but a lot of say, when you have a lot of money out there, I mean, you still have to pay the bills. Without a doubt. And we hadn't had a an increase in our rates for about 18 years. There was one increase, and this is the first year after 18 that we've actually had an increase mm-hmm. um, in our rates. And as you just said, things go up, and um, we needed to do that in order to not use what we have um, in your it, re- in your reserves exactly yeah um a lot of projects coming up that are going to be very expensive and um sure we need well the supply chain and to a certain extent you know especially with this pandemic and and so that has been affected uh, tremendously you know getting getting chemicals um you know deliveries of of, of uh, supplies uh, you know you still have to maintain the system you know you have water leaks you have to buy clamps you have to buy this and a lot of times those things aren't as readily available as they used to be exactly you know as far as that goes now now cromwell in in relation to new britain is is just a a little bit different uh, structure uh, cromwell is uh uh under a fire and water district as that goes that is correct yes. okay so how does that work as far as in relation to uh you know do you, you build for fire services and so forth or um, I don't. I'm not involved in anything like that. Um, okay. I know there's ambulance services that are part of it as well, but I, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not involved in that. You're on the water it's strictly, side. It's strictly water side Strict- for me, yes. Okay, fine. You know, uh, now, as far as the, the supply on, on water, most of most of your, your water supply is groundwater wells, correct? Correct, yes. Uh, and so, so uh, there's, uh, you know, we... You know, in, in comparison, we, we used to be a reservoir and a well, and then, you know, with the Safe Drinking Water Act, uh, you know, we opted not to build a treatment plant. We're getting, you know, probably 60% of our water through MDC, but we still have one well. How many wells do you guys have now over there? Four. You have four wells. Yes. Okay. So uh, production-wise, what, uh, you know, they, they I think one the one up on Route 3 there by TPC, that's, there, there are two wells up there, I think, aren't there? Um, you're testing me. I'm not involved with that. I don't really. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, uh, I think there are two wells up there, uh, as far as I wish you. I think you know, 1.2 to 1.3 million gallons uh, MGD capacity a day. I believe that you're correct about that, um, but I'm not familiar as to where they are exactly. I'm not. I'm not from Cromwell, so I'm not yeah, overly there, familiar. There you go. You're, you're from hard hitting. Well, you're actually in, in Plainville, correct? I am. Okay. I am. Not hard hitting New Britain. No, but I was originally. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Th- there you go. Now, as far as the uh, 
you know, billing goes now. Are, are you guys on quarterly billing? Quarterly, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. So when, when you got in, you know, went to work for Britain, did you, did you have any experience as far as in relation to, you know, uh, anything in water other than it, you just kind of moved over from... I moved over. Yes, okay. I didn't have any um, okay. experience at all. And now, how how big of uh, how big a department was that as far as uh, in in your billing department over there? The billing department we had um, there were four of us plus a bookkeeper. Okay. And then we had um, an administrative person overseeing us. Okay. So um, yeah, and it was job sharing when I first um, went to the water department in New Britain. It was actually job sharing. Oh. We had basically one computer. Oh boy. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so we would take turns um, in doing, you know, the what cash and the deposits and okay. things like that. So it's come a long way. <laughs> okay. Technology moves pretty quick. It does. And you just try to keep up. That's what, the, <laughs> uh, you know, my tenure in the water industry started, you know, we're probably uh, embarking on 49 years and uh, now I'm doing IT and so forth. But uh, technology really moves quickly. And, you know, you go from, you know, going out and reading the meters with with a book and pen, pencil. Okay, oh, yes. writing those readers, flip the page and walk down, and now now everything. Are you guys pretty much all radio reads over there now? We're getting there. Yeah. We're n- we're not there yet, but we're getting there. Okay. Yeah. So, so you get get in the truck and you you know drive down the street and those readings just kind of pop, popping in. They are. I know it's great. We're really um, we have an aggressive program to um, upgrade the meters and so forth to get that okay um, but we still have those old touch pads out there and oh yeah yeah well, so i think everybody has the touch pads in yeah. one shape or form you know uh as, as far as that goes so um you know so uh go, going to cromwell now when you got there um how, how many people have you been are you working with there now um, there's three besides myself, okay. um, but there's really one main billing person. Okay. Um, the three ladies that work with me, um, they basically have separate job duties. Okay. Um, one is strictly minutes for all the board meetings and so forth and the oh. committee meetings. Okay. Um, one is for accounts payable. Mm-hmm. And then there's the one main billing person who okay. is retiring shortly. So See, there you go. Case yeah. in point. You know, I think yeah. we're, we're, we're all getting there. Um, so, you know, uh, and again, an advice for our young listeners that perhaps might want to embark on looking at a career in the industry. So basically, you, you really didn't have any experience at all no. you know, when you started. So it's just yeah. the, they kind of threw you in the deep end of the pool. <laughs> Correct. But, you know, anything can be learned, whether, sure. you know, software and procedures and so forth. So mm-hmm. it's it's not that bad. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as far as the, st- the software that you guys, do you guys use a, sp- a specific billing software? Yeah. Yes, we use Munis. Munis. OK, that's yeah. that's one of the biggest ones out there. And they have, uh, my God, modules that do everything from uh, financials to billing to, you know, you name it, even iron your shirt. Exactly. You know, <laughs> you know, it's expensive, you know, as yeah. far as that goes. But yeah. Uh, so, you know, the town of Cromwell, they, they use uh, uni, uh, Munis throughout their governmental platform. Um, I don't think everyone does. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I believe SOAR does, but I'm not sure who else does. Okay. Yeah. Um, so now you're, are your you're office on Old Main Street still? Or we're on we're? One West Street. We're within the Cromwell Fire. Uh, department. Okay, right there by yes. where the ambulance is and the, where the police department is there too. Right next door. Ah, I see. Yes. So now, um, how many how many guys do you have working in the in the water department now? We have three um, plus our water operations manager. Mm-hmm. Um, we are looking to hire a fourth person, which we really need desperately. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's hard to get people with the things that we need. Um, their CDLs and so forth, be able to operate equipment. And sure, and not, not to mention the the, the uh, certification for, for you know treatment plant operator, operator, distribution operator, and all that that type of thing. So yeah, backflow and things yeah, like oh that. yeah. Uh, yep. Do you guys do most of your backflow prevention testing and so forth? Uh, we do a good portion of them, but people can also hire um, outside contractors that, so. that service their irrigation systems. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. As long as they send in their reports to uh, Cromwell, we're uh, good to go. There you go. Yeah, uh, there you go. So um, you know, when you look at, at doing uh, a, a lot of the billing now, uh, as far as that goes. Now I assume with that with that software, um, 
you, you get into looking uh, for high reads and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, I, I know you were, we were talking before we came to get a, a, a high read in, in, in a car wash, huh? Uh, not quite. It was quite the opposite, oh. where we discovered that the meter um, had stopped. Okay. And it wasn't caught, unfortunately. Uh-huh. And so, um, yeah, we have to look into that a little bit further. So. Yes, yes. Yeah. And you, because when you have uh, a stuck meters, that's th- those are your... Uh, um, those are your revenue sources, and when they stop making revenue, then oh. you know it's not a good thing. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, as far, and it's just like you know having a leak and losing water, because uh, you have to pay to treat that water, you have to pay to pump that water, and if it's you know if it's not going through a re- meter, uh, you know, producing revenue for you, that's not a good thing. Absolutely. So now, who keeps track of you know the uh, the accountable water or unaccountable water and all of that? Um, as far? Our water operations manager. Okay. Yeah. So they uh, go through and, you know, that that's the quandary of, you know, the classification where non-revenue water versus unaccounted water. Right. You, know, you have the non-revenue water. So it's water that you know where it went, you know, you know, street sweeping fires or whatever. And then you have the uh, unaccountable water where you I don't know. Flushing. And you, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, now you're, you're flushing. Do you guys uh, flush twice a year or once a year? Once a year. Once a year. Yeah. Now, is typically, is that in the spring or the fall? We, I believe, are just starting. Okay, um, so it's yeah. springtime. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And typically that's, you know, from, that's what we used to, we used to do twice, uh, spring and fall, because uh, when we had our reservoir, you, you get that thermal turnover of the, the reservoir, so... You get that dirty water that, that the cold water comes up and the, the warm water goes down and you know it, it kind of disturbs a lot of the uh, uh, organics in the in the reservoir. So you, know, you have to flush all of that stuff out. Right. As as that. Now, as far as uh, you know, going through and, and doing uh, who produces all of the, the work orders and so forth that uh, uh, things that need to you know I, like for for instance uh, you have to go out and do final reads and so forth. You know. So. Um. That. We kind of do that through the billing office. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we get the radio reads in and and so forth. And once in a while, we have to send our guys back out <clears throat> to reread because okay. of, um, it, not that they're inaccurate, but all the numbers the don't come through. Yeah. Or if, if it's, like you said, a high or low read, uh, you kind of want to check into that so that um, you want to build them accurately, what well, they're I, using. So a- Absolutely. And I yeah. think it's, uh, you know, works better on both ends, you know, as far Certainly. as making sure, you know, if you put you in the in the, the uh, customer shoes, you want to make sure you're not getting overbilled or, you know, whatever. So Exactly. Uh, get everything that's due to you, you know, as far as that goes. So uh, that, that's great. Um, now, as far as how, uh, what's your future look like as far as uh, you're liking what you're doing, you're part-time, so you're just going to keep doing what you're doing. Correct? I have the best of both worlds, yes. There, there you, <laughs> you, you can go home and swim in the pool or do whatever, you know, exactly. as far as that goes. So nice. So, um, so what do you do for hobbies? Tell me. Gardening. Nice. Yard work. Okay. Um, Watching my son's band perform. Yes, and shows that we have a common interest. He's, 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 he's a musician also. So he is. Uh, fantastic. Both my sons, actually. Yeah. In fact, uh, one of your sons, he's, he's uh, occasionally does some guitar work for me as far as uh, yeah. repairs. So um, now, how old are they? 35 and 37. They're not old enough to have kids that old. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> so now are they uh are they involved in, in in the industry at all or um my older son works for the city of new britain okay uh, yeah he works for uh public works okay so uh he's been there um i believe it's going on six years nice okay. yeah and my younger son he works from home he does investing there you go well, there's nothing wrong with that you know really there's plenty of uh plenty of investing to do out there these days <laughs> my god it's it's uh, you know just trying to avoid the uh, the potholes, my oh, God. Oh, yeah. And it's, there's lots. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, it's a very volatile market, I'm sure. It is. Know, as, as far as that goes. So, um, all right. So, I, w- one of the uh, questions that I, I started asking, okay, um, what, what's your favorite food? If you had only, could eat one food for, uh, every day, what, what, what would it be? Chocolate. Okay. <laughs> I'm a chocoholic, so yes, I would love a piece of chocolate every day. Nice. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess that uh, I'm I'm just wondering what 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 food group that might be considered. Uh. A very bad one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nice, <laughs> nice. So um, going uh, obviously with uh, the uh, the way the, the the water rates are going and so forth. I think you know everything is you know escalating as far as that goes. Now, um, who who governs your water rates as far as that that goes? And do you have a, a board of directors over there? We huh? have a board, yes. Okay, and and then we have a, we've had um, a town vote. Um, to ask for the, we were asking a 20% increase because we hadn't had an increase for so many years. Okay. Um, we ended up with a 15% and um, the public did vote um, to do that, mm -hmm. which uh, we were very happy about, obviously, because right, um, right, right. it had been so very long since we had so, an increase. So your budget actually is, is is separate from the town budget, correct? It is. Okay, so. Yes, we're not even considered really part of the town. Okay. Um, um, their HR, their um, other departments, where we can't use them. We don't use them. Okay. Um, so you're your own entity, really? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it's it's interesting. I know that uh, Cromwell has had the, the the water fire district as long as I can remember, as far as I, as I know. We used to, you know, years and years ago, we used to go over and do a lot of your large taps, mm -hmm. tapping your six and eight inch taps because we had a, a large tapping machine, and I think. We don't do that anymore, but because uh, you guys got your own equipment now, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, it's amazing how that uh, it, it had worked out. And uh, you know, we used to have, oh God, um, Bill uh, Jarzevec, okay, oh, was yeah. for for years and so forth. And uh, uh, and I can't, and you probably don't remember who was before Bill. Uh, he was an older gentleman, and I can't remember his name either. Um, Bill was retired when I came aboard, but okay. I, I do know Bill. Yes. Very nice gentleman. Oh, yes. God. Knowledgeable guy. Yes. I think, I think there was a Tony over there one time uh, that I remember. Way before my time. Yes, yes. Yeah, to go from there. So, anyway. Um, okay. Well, uh, Donna, thank you so much for coming over. I mean, uh, you know, it, again, what would your, uh, if you had any recommendations to, to uh, young students looking to get into into the water industry, would you, would you recommend them to... Uh, to look into those uh, career opportunities? Without a doubt. It's a stable career. Yep. Um, everyone needs water uh, um, to survive, so it's never going to go away. Yep. Um, you know, if you want to get ahead, you can certainly do that within a water department. I worked my way up. Um, I was actually on this uh, assistant director. It was called administrative services officer in an acting capacity for three and a half years. Okay. When I started with the city, I was in one of the lowest positions yep. um, before water. And so I did work my way up. Mm -hmm. um, you gain a lot of knowledge over those years. Sure. So. You know, and, and the thing is, is that that's one of the, you know, the misconceptions that, you know, n not everybody's made to go to college. Okay. Correct. And, uh, you know, you've got very, very good paying stable careers um, that you can get into without doing that uh, and getting into yourself into, you know, huge amounts of student debt and so forth. But by the same token, there are, uh, you know, avenues of, of advancing yourself, getting more certifications, going into the, uh, the operations or distribution fields. Okay. Which do require certifications, yes. but you know, that's something new. And a lot of the, uh, the, the, the water utilities uh, these days, uh, will pay for you to 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 uh, you know better yourself uh, for the tuition or whatever you need to take. So, exactly, uh, which are you know huge benefits, and that's one of the perks uh, of of being in that industry as far as that goes. So anyway, well anyway, Donna Donna Bacosi, okay, uh, originally from the New Britain Water Department, okay, now uh, kind of. Uh, working part-time for the Cromwell Water and Fire District and uh, but still doing billing, still uh, still sending out the bills, still still collecting the monies. And uh, so, Donna, thanks so much for coming over. Thank you for having me. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our episode here. And we're live in the studio with Miss Donna Bacosi from the uh, Cromwell Fire and Water District telling us about her storied career uh, embarking into the water industry. So I'm your host, Dave Kosminski, and stay tuned and uh, be sure to consider and like and subscribe if you like the podcast. Thank you so much.